Here it is. And it's the automatic transmission is a mystery to most, but not for long. Ian and Jesse bring back the cheap Jeep for a little junkyard rebuild. Plus, it's east versus west on this near impossible course. That and more today on Extreme 4x4. Welcome to Extreme 4x4. We got a little head start today by slipping the cheap Jeep up on the hoist, and once I get the standard transmission on the floor, we can get to work. When you last saw the old cheap Jeep, we had just returned from a trip to Teleco, North Carolina, where we took both of our project Jeeps out on a test run. Today, we're going to be fixing some of the bugs that we found. One of the main things was that you have to have a third leg to drive a clutch, and all the trail rigs out there were automatic, and they were doing much better than I was since I stalled it out so many times. We're going to replace this standard transmission with a brand new automatic. Well, it's not brand new, we got it from a junkyard, so we're going to have to rebuild it first. The only issue is with an automatic transmission, they have higher gear ratio, so you're going to lose some of that low end torque. But you can fix that by changing your gear ratio somewhere else in the driveline. And that's what we're going to do by rebuilding this Dana 300, changing it from a 2.6 to a low 4 to 1 gear ratio. Now the Jeep automatic transmission is based on the Torque Flight 904 from Dodge. The case is different and it's coded as a Torque Command 999, but all the internals inside this thing are the exact same as the Dodge. And we're going to go through this thing step by step on the rebuild. And although everything we show you is going to be pretty specific to this particular model, a lot of the tips and tricks we show you along the way, you can apply to almost any automatic transmission overhaul. <laughs> One good tip is to buy an automatic transmission and the case at the same time. That way, while you're rebuilding all your new stuff, you can still be driving your truck and it won't be down at any time. So once all this new stuff is rebuilt, you can just do the swap and then throw the old parts on a shelf or go ahead and sell them. Rebuilding an automatic transmission is honestly no harder than rebuilding a carburetor. It's just a series of steps and procedures and adjustments that need to be followed specifically. And the rebuild kits, they don't come with instructions, so you're going to need a manual. If you can find the original equipment manual, that's great. If you can't, the ATSG, or Automotive Transmission Service Group, has rebuild specific manuals for all domestic and import cars and trucks. The only real thing that you got to watch out for is if you rebuild a carburetor, put it on, it doesn't work. It's only four bolts to so take it back off. You rebuild this, put it back in, it doesn't work. That's a big headache, man. With the pan off, we can remove the valve body. Some models have check balls underneath, so be careful not to lose it. Using a slide hammer and some bolts, we can pull the pump out of the housing. Remove the front band by backing off the adjusting screw, then the clutch housings and the band come out the front. The output shaft snap ring is next, and the shaft pulls out the back, followed by the planetary gear sets, low reverse band, and finally, the sprag, or sometimes called roller clutch. A couple of things to remember when you're rebuilding an automatic transmission. First, dirt is your number one enemy. So make sure that you're working on a nice clean work surface and clean it as you go, wipe up any spills. Secondly, most technical manuals have great exploded views of the parts inside a transmission. But most transmissions had updates or changes inside a model year. So the only way to make sure that you put it back together correctly is to take all the parts and lay them out in the order they come out of the transmission and try not to mix them up too much. Now once we get all these accumulator pistons and then the band apply pistons out of this case, we can go ahead and start cleaning and inspecting all the parts. Inspect all the planetary gears for damage on the teeth. If one of these is broken, the whole assembly will have to be replaced. We'll disassemble the clutch housing and inspect all the friction and steel plates to see if any of them are burnt. You can see here at this top clutch, it looks burnt, but these second clutches are obviously all the friction material is worn off. If we put this transmission in the truck without rebuilding it, it wouldn't have worked at all. Rebuilding your own automatic transmission, a model like this, should take around eight hours. But the reality is, you're going to save well over $1,000 by doing it yourself. 
With a transmission all apart, you can really get a good idea of how it works if you understand what you're looking at and knowing that some of the systems are very complex and you need to watch what you're doing because a small mistake here can affect the transmission when it's all back together. Like this valve body. All these screws go in very specific spots. So if you take a digital picture of the valve body at each stage of disassembly, then all you have to do is reference the picture as you put it back together. Now, we're going to go through a pretty quick version of how an automatic transmission works, but here it is in its simplest forms. It starts at the front of the transmission. Right here, this is the oil pump. Inside here, there's a geared pump that sends fluid throughout the entire transmission to lubricate it. But it's not only there to lubricate it. It's there to act as a hydraulic system that goes into this particular item right here, the valve body, also known as the brains of the transmission. Inside this valve body are fluid passages and valves that control when your transmission shifts into what gear. And I know it looks like a pile of spaghetti, but when you start to read hydraulic diagrams and spend a lot of time in here, you can really start to understand how this works. This, along with this pump, control your clutches and your bands to stop certain parts of your planetary gear set or spline those parts onto the input or the output shaft. And the planetary gear set is where you get all your speeds inside your transmission. And it's a little complex, but we got it on the chalkboard for you. The planetary gear set is simply three gears in a real compact package that are in constant mesh. Now the first gear, which is the smallest gear, is the sun gear. And then that wraps around the outside of it is the ring gear, which is the middle size gear. And then inside that is the carrier, which carries the planets around the sun gear. Now this little package can give you a whole bunch of different gear ratios as well as a directional change. If I hold the carrier and put the sun gear as the input, you can see that the ring gear actually turns in the opposite direction. That's how you get reverse. Now you can do the same thing to get different gear ratios. If I mark the carrier and the ring and then go ahead and hold the sun gear, turn the carrier, you can see that the ring gear turns faster or an overdrive output. If you think of this whole system as three individual gears, just like on a bicycle with a small gear driving a big gear, it's easy to understand all the gear ratios you can get out of this one package. When we get back after the break, we're going to clean everything up and start putting our transmission back together. Welcome back to Extreme, where you can see some of the best off-road action anywhere. This week, high drama at the World Extreme Nationals. Twenty-one of this country's best supermod drivers came to Central Ohio for the first ever East-West Grand National. This is the largest event in rock crawling, period. It's a big deal. Drove 2,000 some odd miles to get here to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Eastern boys who we don't get to compete against as often as we'd like. These men gave all they had in qualifying to earn one of six spots in the final big money shootout. Everybody wants to be in that top six, so it's dog-eat-dog -dog today. The guys are going for the bigger lines, the most crazy things because the money's there. Since turning pro three years ago, one name has dominated extreme rock crawling competition. Randy Torbert. Randy Torbert. Randy, he's the man. Yeah, well, everybody is looking, you know, to beat us. This mild-mannered family man from Sail Creek, Tennessee, doesn't need tattoos or nose rings to be hardcore. It's just four wheels and some nasty rock. You like uh, extreme sports, this is it. In rock crawling, the driver either hammers the course or the course hammers the driver. Randy, though, takes a more cerebral approach to get through an obstacle. We really study the course as best we can, and, and we usually got a plan when we go in. It don't always work out, but, you know, we usually got a plan. He's just a hard guy to outthink. He, he picks a line that, after he does it, you think, well, why didn't I do that? That was, that was a, the most amazing line. He's so laid back and cool, it's like he's doing a quaalude while he's in the car. With his unique axles, he was considered anything but cool when he showed up at his first pro event. The axles are out of a tracker. Three years ago, we, me and a buddy of mine decided to try them, so we, we went to a junkyard and got them and, and refurbished them and put them in, and they've been working real good. We've had real good luck out of them. They are a little heavy, but if, if you're going to add weight, you add it at the wheels towards where the traction is at. He doesn't hear any tractor jokes now. Don't underestimate those tractor axles. <laughs> they seem to be the real deal. At Ohio, Torbett had a new secret weapon that helped him dominate the qualifier. We've got a prototype transfer case that'll let us 
disengage or engage on the fly. It don't matter if we're spinning or not, and it's, and it's working real good. I'm mean, really impressed about it. The way we always try to do is if, uh, if you're having a problem with something, work on that problem. And uh, a lot of the transfer cases are hard to get in and out. If you're in certain binds, it's almost impossible to get in and out. Uh, you have to beat on the shifters and all that kind of stuff. That's why we come up with this idea, and uh, you know, because it's, it's so easy. With the final six trucks set for the shootout, Randy knows it's not going to be easy. I mean, there is pressure. We're going to do the best we can and just hope for the best. That's all we can do. One obstacle littered with bonus lines and danger would decide the national championship. With the qualifying scores carrying over, all Torbett could do was watch as the five drivers ahead of him tried to knock him out. For the win, Randy didn't need bonus lines. Just play it safe, cruise through the obstacle, and he will be champion. We're not going to take a chance on time to turn over. Pressure's on me. In the fog of war, trouble. His trademark cool melted. Then, disaster. Just a few feet from the finish, Randy and his spotter tried to push it across the line. The time ran out. You just missed the finish of a lifetime on Randy Torbett. He crashed just like four feet short of the end gate. Went from first to probably fourth. You can't win them all. You just want to. I mean, we all want to win, you know what I mean? That's just part of it, though. His pain was Jesse Haynes' glory. I still can't believe that we ended up national champion. Woo! Extreme off-roading requires an extreme transfer case. Jesse rebuilds a Dana 300 next. Welcome back to Extreme, where we're taking out our standard transmission and replacing it with an automatic transmission in our cheap Jeep. And while Ian finishes rebuilding that automatic transmission, I'm going to go ahead and get this transfer case ready for a set of new gears. The process of rebuilding this automatic transmission is as simple as replacing all the O-rings, gaskets, and seals with new ones that come in your overhaul kit. Our kit we got from TCI. It comes with all the gaskets, seals, O-rings, steels, and clutches that wear out under normal use. Except the clutch discs are made up of a different material. They're designed to handle higher heat and more aggressive shifting than a stock piece. Now before you install these, you want to soak them in some tranny fluid. We start with the Sprague clutch, making sure to install it in the correct direction. We'll use Vaseline to hold the transmission parts, never any grease. Then the low reverse band, planetary gear sets, and the output shaft. Install the snap ring and the thrust washer. Then the clutches can be rebuilt after soaking the new frictions in some transmission fluid. After assembly, the clearance should be checked. To be sure the seals are installed correctly, you need to air check the clutch packs using some compressed air. Then put it all together. Don't forget the gasket between the pump and the housing. Alignment of this part is critical. All we have now is the accumulator pistons, the band apply pins, adjust them according to the manual, and then we can drop the valve body in place. When you put the valve body together, just go ahead and use some Vaseline to hold the check balls in place, and the Vaseline will dissipate with the heat of the transmission fluid. And then once that's all together, we can put the pan on, put it back in the truck. But because we're doing a swap, we need to add a few more things. We're obviously going to need an automatic shifter. We went to Hearst and got this Promatic 2 because it has a nice long handle and good ratchet mechanism. We're going to need a cooler. So we got this one from Hayden with a built-in electric fan. And the last and most important piece is this kick-down cable from Locar. This is going to attach the carburetor to the throttle valve and the valve body and help tell the transmission when to change gears. The Dana 300 really is one of the best factory transfer cases out there with its 2.62 low range, a wide variety of applications, and its small size, it basically takes second to an Atlas II. Now for our Dana, we're going to be using these parts that we got from JB Conversions. 
32 spline input and output shafts, a billet rotation plate so we can clock up the transfer case and have a flat belly underneath, and of course, their signature low max 4 to 1 gear set. Now, building a transfer case isn't that difficult. It might only take about two to four hours out of your day, but if you have one of these instruction manuals that we got with our gear set, you should have no problems. With the front and rear yokes pulled and the bottom cover off, remove the retainer bolt and tap out the shafts. Again, keep all your parts organized to make reassembly easier. Remove the input bearing retainer. Come on. These are really stuck in there and we're having a little bit of a pain in our butt. <laughs> and the rear output housing. Normally, you'd put the entire case into the press and remove the front output shaft, but as luck would have it, it scared the bearing right off. Well, hell. Then press out the rear. Now, you have an empty tea case. Not only are those Lomax gears stronger than the OEM gears because they're made of high-strength steel, but they're also a lot thicker, which gives us a greater contact area. And these shafts, <laughs> these shafts, are typically going to break right about here. Compare it to the new one. These bad boys, oh, they're not going to break at all. Stay tuned, because after the break, it all goes back together. grind some of the case away right here for clearance for the new gears because they're so much bigger than the originals. And with all these bearings pressed on, I can go ahead and seal up our real housing and put it on. Next is the front input gear and rotation plate, followed by the front output bearing retainer and shift rail assembly. Assemble the roller bearings into the idler gear. Use a lot of grease to hold these in place. Remove the socket and drop the idler into place. Tap in the cross shaft. Now that everything's back together, I can go ahead and install this cable bracket. That's right, I say cables. We're gonna be using this cable shifter assembly that we got from Whaley Enterprises. Plus, the shifters that we got with it, we can mount just about anywhere we want. I went ahead and installed a flex plate on the back of the motor. We obviously can't use that clutch and flywheel anymore. Now we can install our transmission and transfer case. But don't think we're done with the cheap Jeep. In a couple weeks, we're gonna be putting the rest of the parts on this truck that we ordered. Plus, we gotta take it out and test it. It goes in that way, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I was just gonna grab the whole thing. Oh, sorry, I'm like, <laughs> I wanna help you because it's heavy. 